when I go to see people dance, I'm always intrigued by the person. I'm like, oh, I would love to have coffee with them. That just looks, whatever is in there, that just looks interesting. Pretty is great. You know, you're like, ah, but like, interesting. You're like, oh, there's something in there because the choices that the person is making makes you wonder, I don't think about that. So make me interesting. Here we go, please. What would it mean to do a whole program at the Nation's Theater that focused on Blacks in ballet. What would happen if we could bring some of the ballet dancers that dance in historically white companies into a space and sort of eradicate the weight of being Black in the white ballet space? It's all people from around the globe, different companies, different styles, different personalities, and it come together somehow. <laughs> This is historic, this is a momentous occasion, and it's just one that is filled with uh, rich history. I know these are gonna be friends and colleagues that I'll have for like the rest of my career and for the rest of my life, honestly. I don't think that we're gonna get anything like this again. <laughs> and so I think, I think now it's gonna be really interesting to see how people are able to embody this in their regular work. To me, when you think about blackness and dance, there are no other women than Denise Saunders Thompson and Teresa Ruth Howard who have to be brought into the project. Jane actually gave us a call. She was like, hey, I have this idea. And one thing we knew was that we wanted to dispel myths. Blacks really have been in ballet for almost as long as it has existed. There's a narrative about ballet, and we wanted to kind of flip it on its head. It's not something the Kennedy Center does that often, produce a new dance. I basically sat down and was like, what pieces that already exist are gonna show up on our stage? And Teresa was like, wait a second, <laughs> what if we just brought all these people together? because I know that there are a whole bunch of black ballet dancers who are dancing in companies that they feel like they're the only one or one of a few. And the question was, what if we gave them a radically different experience? What would happen to them as individuals? What would happen to them as artists? What would blossom in them? Creating a safe space where your blackness is oddly irrelevant because it's absolutely centered. And so that's what I that's what I did. I was like, can we do that? Can we can we get dancers from all across the world to to come and and be a part of this? Hello. <laughs> we had a very tight production schedule, and we had two six day weeks, so really twelve days in the studio to create this ballet. So I asked a lot from them, and they gave a lot in return. Those early days, I remember day one and day two, it was like, it was intense. What was amazing to me is that they looked like a company almost from the start. That sort of synergy started to create a culture of support and they're like, yes, you know, like they're seeing each other, they're encouraging each other. We would do something, take our lunch break, and we'll come back, and then he'll say, all right, let's have the men do the arm phrase, but the right side of the body using the leg, and all the men just blank. And all of a sudden, it's just like voices from behind us, all the women saying, it's this. Everybody would get up and be like, no, it was like this. Okay, cool, it goes like this, thank you so much. Helping each other and not leaving you out there hanging to dry. That doesn't normally happen. In my regular job, a lot of dancers would see a moment like that and be working on the side in a way of like, let me show this choreographer that I know the movement so that they can put me in. And in that moment, that wasn't what that was. 
we had a whole group of people behind us saying, this is what it is, you know what it is, you can do it, start fresh. It feels very empowering. The people around you support those mistakes, support those finding of what the movement, what's your next step. Day two, just being like, who are these people? Thank you so much. I don't know who you are, but I appreciate your words. Like, <laughs> so yeah. So we've just finished day two. Day two. Of reframing the narrative. Reframing. Reframing. We've been reframing the choreography. My brain hurts. I think by the end of the second day, they were like, can we talk about feelings? And I was like, absolutely. And like, I didn't think, I didn't have anything in mind of what, what I was going We were to able to talk about our expectations coming into the process, what we've learned. Created sort of a healing space for all of us that have been in predominantly white companies and what our experiences have been. The culture of ballet, it's a very silent art form. And if you're suffering, nobody cares and nobody knows. And that's kind of how it was previously. With me, it's always been about an aesthetic and like the aesthetic that I don't have. And so to be able to be in a room full of people that are like, that doesn't matter because what you're doing is so beautiful that I'm not seeing that your feet aren't the pointiest or that you're not the most flexible dancer. Yes. Just being able to like share that with the people who you are dancing beside and working with, I think is actually really special. As a dancer, you're always on display in a way that is just about your physicality and no one is asking you to show up as an intellectual. No one's asking you to use your voice and speak to what you need. You learn how to use your voice, how to speak up, how to say like, oh, I'm in pain, oh, I'm having this problem. Whereas before, like, you just needed to deal with it and like mask it, or you know, you'd be weeded out as the weak one. And that's been a big part of this process that I think is very different. And I think because of Teresa allowing us to have that space. She's really created that foundation and that we are all there for each other and that there, we don't have any sort of old habits that can loom that enter the space. And also they're just like cool people. Yeah. <laughs> Gratitude is in the room and respect is in the room. And they are, they have, I'll tell you this. Donald Byrd finished a 20 minute work in three days. I feel like the first few days, it was definitely an adjustment because I think he came in thinking, oh gosh, I have two weeks. We gotta get to work. <laughs> Normally, a piece is sort of administered to us dancers. It's already, it's essentially already choreographed and we just have to learn it and perfect it. But it's not a collaboration in the same way that it was with Donald. I haven't, <laughs> I haven't been asked to show up with my brain like this in a long time in a ballet space. He would say, I want you to move by your knee only after you have all this phrase make it. And you're like, how am I gonna move by my knee only? If I need to move my arm, I need to like change my weight and all these kind of things. He does that. He's really mixing these classical technical elements with things that are far more abstract. He said, I want to see what you as an artist are bringing to the table, what you as an individual are bringing to the table which is like the, per as an artist, like that's just the most satisfying and fulfilling thing to experience. Because when you nail that stuff, it feels really good. But it also feels so good to just like feel your body sometimes, you know. The process was just so um, organic that suddenly kind of realized how there was not gonna be a problem with us making this 20 minute piece in the time that we had. His trust of our professionalism and of our technique, I think it was just an experience that I haven't really had before with so much trust coming from the front of the room. And I think that also comes with people that look like me being in the front of the room. And we don't get that very often where we come from. I think of it as presenting an opportunity as to something that's like an overwhelming challenge. I haven't worked with a choreographer like Donald ever. <laughs> Somebody that was just like, I just want to see you. Quarter mark over on this side. It will be in front of it. It's all right. Okay. Get it just before it comes in. Yeah.
Often when I work with ballet dancers, they are in white ballet companies. And the atmosphere in the room is very different. I'm always trying to prove that I have a right to be there, that I have the skills to be there, that I have something to say about this art form. There's a kind of this unspoken question, like, so who are you? And why do you get to tell me what to do? I mean, that started to change, but I think in this environment that never happened. It caused the speed of the work to happen really quickly. I mean, it's not just me, but I think the dancers, they just kind of gave themselves wholeheartedly in the process, and this environment facilitated that happening. Sometimes how I do things is unorthodox. I've kind of been able to reframe how I think about the work I do and that I do not have to apologize for how I do it. That's just how I do it. Because one of the things is that white artists have the freedom to do it however they want to. Nobody questions them about how they go about doing what they do. I think I'm good at what I do. <laughs> you know, I do. I think I'm good at what I do. And But often I have to prove that I'm good at what I do. Here, in this environment, it's just that I've felt and so it's kind of liberated. I mean, it's still evolving. It's still reframing. It's at the framers right now, you know. Thank you. Uh, it's overwhelming to me that this is actually like coming out of my mind and it's actualized. Blood dances have been around for a long time. I think we are doing a stamp up there and put it in front to like solidify how powerful we can be on the stage and how we can carry a culture and something that's been shaped one way for so many years into today's day. Just because we have a different color of skin, we have a little bit more melanin, doesn't change the work that we do. If a dancer is good, they're good no matter what they look like, no matter what skin they come in or what gender they come in. We're efficient. We're creative. We are loving. We do it through joy. We can be supportive of each other. Seeing that each of us has something to bring to the table that's not all the same, because I think ballet tries to make us all the same. It can just be about the way that you show up. If I I show up with a certain amount of principles, being authentic to those principles. I think I have the power to be able to change the space that I'm normally in. I think that it's given me hope. It's good to know that uh, I'm a good dancer. I just happen to be a black person. <laughs> but there's, there's still a lot of doubt. There's still a lot of doubt on, in what I'm doing and my steps. Because there's someone else who you know, has a higher leg or a prettier foot or whatever it is, these elusive things that make ballerinas pretty or whatever. Well, I think the first step is to acknowledge it and because it's just so beautiful to be here and to just truly feel that I am enough. I can trust myself and I have to trust myself. I am enough and I'm good enough and what I'm doing is just as good or as better as anyone else in the room. This has been an absolutely fulfilling moment. And that's what we wanted to create here at the Kennedy Center. And we've been able to do that. So this is that moment for us. This is that moment for those dancers. And this was the intention. Many of the dancers have said, this has shown me that I am just enough. I'm enough. That work ethic, that drive, the, the idea that we represent something larger than ourselves, but without the pressure, but instead with the support, what can't we do? The support is, is amazing. When something works, everyone's like, yes, you know, it's just so good. It's so good and it's, it's unusual. It's beautiful. I think that we as an artist, we to like encourage others. There is some type of special synergy, vibe, feeling, energy, whatever you want to call it, in the room, in the space that is creating art.
And then as soon as we, the lights came on and we hit the stage, we were like, this is it, here we go. And it just was so much fun. When we're halfway through the piece and I'm watching one of the other dancers killing it out there, it's just really inspiring because you're watching them thrive and it makes you wanna also leave a piece of yourself on the stage. It just means a lot that like my first time performing at the Kennedy Center, I feel like I can, I can be my most beautiful self, like as I see myself and not how someone else thinks I would look best. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're all so, so different and therefore we are reframing the narrative. Yes, we are all black, but then we're completely different individuals. So we're definitely not part of the same box. So just let's be done with that. <laughs> yeah and people have to take risks and take chances and there will be successes and failures along the way, but that's, that's the beauty of this art form is that it's always growing and evolving. Otherwise we'd be watching, you know, we'd be watching Swan Lake, still 300 years on, you know what I mean? Like, and that would be it. When we don't think about ourselves in a certain way, right? It starts to, it, we start to do odd things. We start to get, take odd shapes in order to be something that we're not. And we're actually just enough.